honestly, it's been long enough since I bought this knife that I had forgotten that when I went to pick this out, pick this knife out, uh, I went and picked it up at Blade HQ. I remembered that I think I did look at three, maybe two or three different ones until I had a lockup that I liked best. Hey my friends, it's a late Boy Scout with my review of the Essie Avispa folding knife. This is a nice large frame lock folding knife from Essie. One that I particularly had hoped would be like an excellent replacement for the Rat Model 1. We'll do a comparison side by side with those two here in a moment. As it turns out, I don't know if it's quite ready to replace that knife. I mean, it's kind of designed in a way that it should, but I don't think it quite does yet. But we'll get into that as the review progresses. We're gonna see some uh, some tests of this knife being used in what I consider kind of a, you know, a normal battery of EDC tests. I'm talking about some paper slicing, some cardboard cutting, and some, some wood that I like to try to carve into. That's kind of the stuff that uh, gives a good representation of what the knife can do and also kind of how your experience will be in using it. And I'll talk more about that as, that, as the time comes. But like I said before, this is the new knife from Essie. Um, this is produced, I should, this is really important to point out actually, the BRK on here stands for Blue Ridge Knives. Who's Blue Ridge Knives? I can't tell you that I know all that much about them. Unfortunately, I wish I did. However, they are actually the ones that are producing the Avispa. The Avispa's got a really cool logo on it there, by the way, as you can see. Look at that. I don't know, is that a mosquito or something else? Um, I don't think it's a mosquito. It's kind of like a wasp or something. But anyway, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know if Avispa means you guys who do chime in. Or just use Google Translate right real quick and tell me. Anyway, um, Again, this is it's designed to be an awesome knife. We've got a four-way repositionable pocket clip, pocket clip on it. I don't recommend that you put this here. And I talked about this, I alluded to this briefly when I uh, showed this in an EDC, a quick like EDC check that I did with my friend Crockett 20 um, on the range one day. The reason I don't have that down here so that this would be um, tip, what would that be, tip up? I always have to th think about it every time. Can you believe that? I've been reviewing my knives for how many, how long now, how many years? Yeah, anyway, I don't put it so that it's tip up on this frame lock side because that actually presses against the frame and then makes it harder to both open and close. So that's no good. You've got, well, the reason it makes it harder to open is because you do have a, a little ball detent down in here, which you probably won't be able to see, but on the frame down in here, we have a little ball detent, which again, just kind of helps to retain that in the closed position right there. But then also, when you're going to close the knife, again, if you have this pocket clip pressing on the frame, absolutely, it makes it harder to close. You can still do it, and if you get to the point that you're comfortable with that and you like it better, by all means, go ahead. I decided not to. I'm happy with either tip up or tip down in most cases, and knowing that this is also right and left compatible, that's pretty cool. I have not, I have not actually switched this to that side to see how, you know, if the screws go deep enough to easily connect to that, I apologize, but probably should have done that, but I think it does. Chime in if you have this knife and you know that it doesn't. This is obviously in the sand color with what I believe is a, what is it? Uh, fiberglass FRN type of uh, material here that looks like a G10. It's a G10 type of texture, but that is not G10. It's good enough, it works. Um, it's a little bit, it's slicker obviously than G10 would be. And uh, in both in pocket and in hand, it feels okay. I think that uh, you can get some decent work done with it, and I'll talk about that in, as I go over the testing that I did with it. But I, obviously I would have preferred G10, but yeah, would have brought the price up. And what is the price on it? Let's touch on that. It's very, very good, like 30 bucks for this knife. A US 8 steel on it, not too bad. I'll take that for a Taiwan made knife. Um, yeah, good materials. I like the fact that it is a frame lock. That's again, kind of an upgrade from the Rat Model 1, which is a liner lock. So theoretically, it's gonna to be tougher. It's gonna to be a stronger knife in hand, stronger for harder use than the liner lock would be. That's, again, theoretically. It is a pillar construction, full flow through pillar construction. You can see some lint down in there, which will clean out very easily. And, uh, and it is also, you can see, the um, liner on this side is actually drilled out to make it a little bit lighter. Still retaining some good structural rigidity though. So good construction overall. Let's talk about sort of how and why maybe this doesn't live up 
to the RAT Model 1. Um, this is mainly, mainly comes from the experience of other knife users. And I hate to just reference other people when it's not my experience, but um, I've heard a lot of people say that this knife is kind of hit and miss uh, for quality. Like the lockup is not all that good on certain ones. And uh, it's just not been a solid knife for them. And honestly, it's been long enough since I bought this knife that I had forgotten that when I went to pick this, out, pick this knife out, I uh, went and picked it up at Blade HQ, I remembered that I think I did look at three, maybe two or three different ones until I had a lockup that I liked best. So yeah, I'm afraid maybe this is a kind of a hit and miss knife for quality. And I don't think that that has to do with the design because the guys over at SE have done a great job with this design. I think it's a fantastic design. I'm afraid it has something to do with the, probably the quality control coming from Blue Ridge Knives and uh, their Taiwan manufacturer. Unfortunately, I hate to hit on them for that, but that's if that's what it is, that's what it is. Overall though, I do really like it. And if you get a solid one, a really good one, you're gonna love this knife, guys. It's so thin. Look how thin that is. We're gonna compare that right now actually with some other knives. We'll get to the uh, EDC testing here in a little bit, but let's while we're on the subject, let's talk about some comparable knives. Number one, we gotta compare it against the Rat Model 1. Okay, size-wise, let's see how they look together. They look very related. Okay, you can see that. I think they do, and especially in that handle, that's the contour right here, and the and the two knives, they look very, very similar. Um, and thickness is an important point, and you can see that right there. It's very, very different. The Avispa is incredibly much, incredibly thinner, incredibly thinner than the uh, Rat Model One. So it's very nice. The stock of the blade is about the same. The length of the blade is about the same. Shape, obviously, is different. We've got a little more, more of it, much more of a drop point, almost a spear point on there, uh, whereas this is not so much dropping at all. Uh, somewhat, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Anyway, that's sort of the side by side on the two knives. I do still have a little more confidence in the Rat Model One, just knowing that uh, the. Um, the quality control has been pretty solid. I love the fit and finish on it. I love how fast it is. Uh, if I had to just choose between one of these two knives, especially considering that they are basically the exact same price, I would probably still go with the Rat Model 1. In fact, if I were gonna buy another knife in this category and had to choose just between the two, I would easily go with that. Easily go with this one. Price, you know, price in mind, thinking about the price easily go with the Rat Model 1, and there's so many varieties of it. Also, so many varieties of this one here, of the Avispa, which is a great thing. You know, we love having a lot of variety. We love being able to uh, choose it in different colors, different um, finishes, and so forth. This is kind of the stone wash finish. They've also got it in a black coated finish. I don't own that one, so I don't know how well the coating holds up on it. But um, yeah, overall, well-constructed, cool knife. And that's how it compares to the Rat Model 1. Let's set a couple other sides, a couple other knives here on the table to compare, just for size and probably for cost as well. So again, both of these in the $30 range. We've got this one right here. This one is also undergoing testing, the Ken Onion Shenanigan from CRKT. That is very close in size. Also pretty close in price, maybe a bit more, 40-ish, I think, is what you might pay for a Shenanigan. That's a very basic model, stone wash, black handle. It comes in lots of other different varieties. Um, this one, obviously it costs a lot more. There's the Endura right there. This is actually the ZDP 189 variety of the blade, but definitely fills the same role. If you're willing to pay a bit more, that's gonna be a great blade. And then of course, how about that one? Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Comes in a little bit smaller actually, I think, than the Avispa, sort of. It's pretty close as far as weight and I think intended roll, but it's the uh, Paramilitary 2 is definitely gonna be an outstanding knife compared to, definitely compared to the Avispa and compared to many of the other ones on the table, it's probably gonna beat a whole lot of them. But that's just the nature of the Paramilitary 2, isn't it? We all, we all kind of fail when we go up against it. Anyways, uh, so that's the Avispa. How about some of the EDC testing that I talked about? So for paper cutting, I was actually quite disappointed. Um, it takes a decent edge, AOS 8 does, but I don't feel like the edge on this particular knife came 
uh, looking all that good. Now, I may have or may not have sharpened it. I don't recall. I don't think I ever reprofiled that as I know. I think I, I did resharpen it once or twice before doing those uh, tests, but the paper was just, it kind of got hung up a lot. I don't know why. It felt like there was, as I'm running my fingernail up the edge of the blade, I don't feel any sort of dead spots, but every time I tried to slice through a paper cleanly, it just kind of got hung up as if there was some sort of a dead spot on the edge. So I couldn't really figure it out. I give it a little bit of a hit for that. It just wasn't getting a clean cut through there. Again, that could be my error if I've done some sharpening to this knife and screwed it up somehow. But um, I think just about any edge can be profiled to a state that it will be nice and clean and cut really, really well. Of course, if it's not, not heat treated well or if you know whoever manufactured it didn't do a good job with the steel, then that could cause some problems and it maybe not won't hold a very good edge for very long. But that's how it did with paper. Moving on, it went to cardboard and it slipped through cardboard really, really well. It's just a great cardboard slicer. That would be attributed to the full flat ground blade on that and a nice slick finish on it. So it just, it slid through all that cardboard really fast. Just did a great job on it. The next test, when I move on to that two by four, which is, um, what is it made of? I don't think it's pine. It's not pine. It's something a little bit harder. I don't remember what it is but it's a nice two by four that I carve away at sometimes. When I got into that, uh, the knife itself held up well. I mean, I pried away at that two by four and this frame lock and the strength of that handle overall did a great, great job. But I would say that ergonomically, it is not a great knife for doing extended cutting like that. The, uh, the spine of the knife right here, definitely dug into the web of my hand, kind of just pinched away at that. And that became uncomfortable pretty quickly. Then of course, the base of the, of the handle also kind of dug into my pinky, the front of the handle I mean, kind of dug into my pinky as I was kind of using that pivot point there and uh, pressing the blade into the metal or into the wood. It became uncomfortable pretty quickly. I mean, I got through a good chunk of all that wood, but it was not fun to do. So that's, I mean, that's gonna be the case with a knife like this. You have to strike a balance between something that's really carryable, but also something that's comfortable to work with. And I think this strikes a pretty good balance there. It would be nice if it were thicker and you know a little more molded to uh, give you a nice grip, but then you've got something fatter that's harder to carry around in all situations. But that is basically what you get with the SE Avispa. I think uh, overall it's a great knife and if quality control were up to snuff, I would wholeheartedly recommend this. As it is, for the price, it's pretty dang good, but uh, I just hope you get a good one. And that's my review of the SU of Vispa. I'm the Late Boy Scout. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all later. There's a Zancudo. There's a Rat Model 2. Designed from the same folks. Randall's Adventure Training Design. The uh, Rat Model 2, uh, basically the Rat, Rat Model 1 scaled down right there. And uh, then they also, when they moved on, they started Essie, now they've got the Zancudo.